Hello everyone and welcome back to Revit Snippets. Great tips you can learn in just a few minutes. Today's lesson will show you how to use Dynamo to quickly calculate the total length of any model or detail lines in your file. As you can see here, I have now the total length for those green lines at about just over 60 meters. This value is live. If I go into the model now and maybe make this line a bit longer going this way, you will see the value has changed to 66 meters. If I copy this line from here to there, that is now a bigger value as well. This can be really useful because unlike other elements like walls, you cannot calculate total length of lines using Revit schedules, at least not for now, even in Revit 2021. By the way, if you are new to this channel, make sure to subscribe now because we do tutorials like this every single week. Okay, let's get started. I will change to another Revit window. This one here, just so we can start fresh by opening this example file here. It's a file we use for another lesson. For now, let's just focus on this level zero view. And as you can see, I have drawn in here a few lines using this line style with this name. We can now, of course, quickly select them all by tap click. But then you notice under properties, the length parameter there is now empty. You may try to go to view, schedule, quantities and start from the lines category. That's the only option available there if you try to get that one and get even all the parameters. You can see the problem now. Those lines, they are not schedulable and that's why to get their length, we need to use Dynamo. Let's go back to here now and then go up here to manage and open Dynamo. Let me just bring it here and then tile the window. And now we have them side by side. Let's now go here, choose new to make a new definition. And firstly, we will see how we can get the length of lines we can select in the model. I will later on show a second method that will calculate the total length of any lines belonging to a particular line type. For now, let's start with the easier one. We firstly need a way to select those lines. Let's now right click on the canvas and search for select model elements. Click it here to drop it in. I can now click on this select button there and pick elements in the model. Just to make it easier, let me just tap select those lines, isolate them by elements. And now we can go here to select and do just a window selection like this. You will see straight away the elements IDs of those lines reported here in Dynamo. Next step, we can get the properties called length of those elements. Let's right click again here and choose to search for get parameter value by name. From now it's easy, we can connect elements to this element input. And for parameter name, let's double click here on the canvas. That will bring up a code block. I can now use quotation marks around the word length. That's the parameter name. If we go into Revit and select one line, this name here has to exactly match the name you can see in the properties window, otherwise this won't work. Having done this, we can now connect this to parameter name. And let's check out the output. You can see straight away, super easy, we can get now all the lengths of those lines. Next step is just to sum up those values into a total. We can now right click here again and search for sum. That's the one we need. It only asks for one input and that's the values that you want to sum up. Let's get them from here and connect to there. If I now expand this now, I can see that's the total length. You can also watch the value quicker by dropping in here a watch node. And then simply connect the sum to this. This way it's going to stay consistently visible for later on. Now before we forget, let's save this script. Okay. So this is the easier method. You simply have to select the lines you want to get length from. And this way it offers some flexibility. You can select more lines or fewer lines, depending on the situation. Anyway, sometimes you will want to have a more global way to get these totals. That will be when you have drawn your lines using a particular line style. If I now select those, for example, under line styles, I can see, I can just give them a particular style called path of travel. And now I kind of want Dynamo to say, go into the Revit model, get all the lines that belong to this particular lifestyle and get their values for me in terms of total length. 
That's super easy to do as well in Dynamo. And that's the method number two we can look at now. For this method, we need to have installed in Dynamo a custom package. If you go to packages, you can do search for a package. And in here, just do archi slash lab. Archilab.net, that's the one we need for today. If you haven't installed it, just click on this arrow here, follow the prompt, accept any messages coming back, and you can get it installed very quickly. For me, I have done that already, so if I now expand this library panel, you can see Archilab is there. Let's start using it for our purpose here. To begin, we firstly need to get all the lifestyles in this project. So let me right click here now and search for get all lifestyles, this one there. This node, as you can see, it has no input, and that's because it doesn't need anything from you to get running. As a matter of fact, it has done its job already. If I now expand this output, you can see that it has collected 19 lifestyles for us. Could be 100 if you have a big model, but for now, we need to find out which one in here will be of our interest. It's a bit hard to see at the moment because those lifestyles, they don't show their name. But worry not, I can quickly get those names using another node called element.name. When I connect this to there and expand the output, you can see straight away 19 objects have now their 19 names reported here. The one we're trying to get is this path of travel lines. And you can see under the first column there, the index of this item on this list is 11. We can now try to get index 11 from that list. So let's search for another node here. Get item at index. I can now get those strings to the list input. And for the index, we just need a number. Let's just double click here again and then type in 11. You can see I'm not using quotation marks as I did up there because with the quotation, this code block will understand this as a text. If you do this without quotations, it will understand your input as a number. So for now, I can get this number to index and straight away I can see now there's only one item coming back and that's the one we need. Next step, we need to get all those lines that belong to this type. And there's a note already for that in the same package, Archilab. We can now right click here and do select module lines by style, this one here. When I connect this to here, I can see now that we have an empty list coming back. And that's simply because our lines here, they are detail lines, not module lines. That's why this note doesn't work for them. If you are unsure whether your lines are detail or model, just go back to Revit, select at least one of them like this, go to the Convert Lines button, put your mouse on top, and it's going to say now, Convert Selected Lines to Model Lines. That means my lines are not yet model lines, and that tells me they are now detail lines. Anyway, we still need a way to get them, so if this node doesn't work, we have to edit it slightly. To do so, let's get into this node now by double-clicking. And you can see in here, it's quite simple. There's only one input, one output, and then all the heavy lifting is done in this Python script node there. And that's the one we need to now edit. Don't worry, you don't have to know Python or anything advanced to do this. Just now select it here, and then do Control c to copy. We can now switch back to the first tab where our script is, and do Control v here to place it in here. Here we go. If I now connect this input to here, we will get the same output, which is up there, empty list. But because now it's in this script definition, I can now double click on it to edit its content. There are a lot to see in here, but our focus is on this line there, model lines. This is the line that says to this Python script, which element category to collect from a particular condition. We can now simply change this word from model to detail and press save changes. And you can see straight away, I have now my lines coming back, all seven of them. From here, it's similar to what you have up here, when you do a selection and then get the length from the selection. We can now copy those four notes. Control C now. Going down here, do Control V to paste them. And then simply connect the list of lines from here to this element input. And straight away, it just works. Let me prove it to you that this is done globally. If I now copy this line, maybe to here, the number should have been bigger, but it's still there. 
The reason is this, Dynamo sometimes is a bit too efficient. It tries not to recompute things that it already has done. So in this case, because we haven't changed any input on this side of the graph, the list of lines are still the same, still seven items. And that's why the sum of their lengths are still the same here. To rerun the script, you need to now close it down and then reopen it from here. As you can see now, that's now the bigger value. It used to be 50 something meters, but now it's 63. Anyway, it's a bit of a hassle to keep closing the definition and reopening it like this, just to update the value. That's why I'll show you now a quicker way. For this trick, we need to change this run mode down here from automatic to periodic. As you can see, however, this is now unavailable because for this to be enabled, you need to have in your graph some certain nodes. And one of them is daytime. If I now right click here, I can search for daytime. And the one we need is here, now. This node simply reports back the current date and time that you are running this script on. As you can see now, that's the date and the time is just after it. Because now that I have this in the graph, I can go down here now and choose periodic. The interval between runs of this script is now defined here. At the moment, it's the default value of 1000 milliseconds. And that just equals to one second. That's good for now, so I'll use this value anyway. Next step, we need to use this node here to update some of the inputs, just so the script down here will refresh itself whenever the time is incremented by one second. Now, the best place for that is here, just before we have this Python script node collect our lines. Simply select this node here and press this plus button to have an additional input port. I can now connect this daytime value to this second input. You will notice that this output list now is blinking whenever the time is updated, so every one second. And that's why if I now go to here and delete this line, for example, this value should change from eight to seven after one second. This means whatever calculation coming after the script will also update because the input list has changed. I can go to here now and check this total line length if I track this line to make it bigger, that will give me a bigger length total. If I now copy this line up there, that's now even bigger than before. So these are the two ways you can have this done, either by using a selection of lines that you can specify manually up there, or by getting all lines from the same line type and get their total length in this second method. Just a quick tip, if you have done with your calculation, make sure you change this run mode back to either automatic or manual because periodic is quite demanding on your computer resources. Having said that, I want to note that using Dynamo for this kind of calculation should just be your last resort, because values from here, firstly, they stay in Dynamo. If you want to bring it into Revit, you need to copy the value to some parameter, and that's manual. If the condition in Revit changes, the value you copied in manually into the model will be out of sync. So whenever possible, if you like to get maybe not the total length of lines, but the total length of walls, Make sure you go to here and use the proper Revit schedule for that job. All right, if you enjoy this lesson and want more like this coming to you every single week, make sure to subscribe to this channel. For now, have a good day and I'll see you in the next lesson.